Hi, grace and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill, and it's good to come to you today as we gather and dwell in the Word on this September 15th, which is a Tuesday, 2020. Today we're going to look at Psalm 133, and it's a short psalm, so let us hear this psalm together. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It's like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. So as you dwell on this and hear this passage, what jumps out at you? Maybe what questions come to mind and what possible nudge might there be in hearing this lesson for you today? The Psalms are very helpful for us, they're instructive. Uh, they're also a response of a people to God during a certain time. A lot of times we include Psalms like this one today in a group of Psalms called the Song of Ascents, where these, were, these words were spoken or sung uh, as kind of a worshipful preparation to gather at the temple, whether where they were traveling up that ascending road to Jerusalem, you know, Zion on the hill, or they were the Levites or the temple priests ascending the steps to the temple. Uh, they were said to have sung these songs to prepare them and talk about God. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. And so we hear from this Psalm that, that unity is a blessing that we receive from God. And you can almost imagine people getting ready for worship, putting behind them all the cares and troubles of the day, of this human life that we live, and gathering around something holy and helpful for us in life. Um, but think about unity and peace. We probably all are have times of disunity in our lives, and we also hopefully all have times of sincere and deep peace that help us get through. I remember after reading this psalm, I was thinking about disunity, and I remember about 10 years ago, our denomination encountered some disunity as it struggled with some theological issues, and I see different denominations do this periodically. But as a result, for us, our congregation experienced some division, and the words and the emotions of division um, were the cause of turbulence, and that's kind of what I remember of that time. Sometimes um, it came across as accusations. Sometimes it was just raw frustration. Um, and when we began to focus, I found, because it took us about two years to kind of regroup and get through this time, when we began to focus on the path forward, listening to God's unifying call of ministry, and it helped us to focus on our five full areas of what we do as a church. We worship and learn as we gather together, but then we go out in the world to witness and serve. And then we have a fifth component called support, and it's what we as a people of God connected to Mount Horde do to help support financially our church, to make sure we're a strong place, but also to support one another in fellowship and in doing things together. And that came out of this turbulent time. And we began to sense peace again once we put God back in our focus and once we worked together uh, understanding who and whose we were. And perhaps the same is true for this time of pandemic where uncertainty and skepticism seem to be um, undergirding aspects of discord and frustration oftentimes. And it was helpful when we, when we as a church decided to use some science and data to be a part of the formula to help us understand and to guide our response. What are we gonna do? And so we put together some phases that would be phased in as we would approach re-entering church, coming back together, but it would be based on what the scientists and what leaders in the medical community were doing. But it was also helpful to think as a church about what we could do as opposed to thinking on what we can't do. Sometimes when you just focus on what you can't do, you can get stuck. And once we realized that even though it wasn't safe to gather indoors in groups, we realized we could still gather. We could gather online. We could gather in events that were outdoors uh, through checking in on each other in social media. And there are many ways. And we can be reminded that the church continues through us individually, 
that when we live our lives wherever we are, we share and shine the light of Christ. And that is our mission. We gather to hear God's word. We go to share it. And that's even our tagline, experiencing and sharing God's presence. And, you know, though there are people across the spectrum of believing how COVID-19 exists, common ground or unity has been a byproduct of this epidemic in some ways. Unity in homes as families come together. Unity in churches and businesses as we all scramble to continue, but maybe in a new way. Or in schools as innovation and brave uh, teachers lead forward. And this reminds me also um, of a theologian by the name of Reinhold Niebert, uh, was a, in the 20th century, who penned the serenity prayer that we, we use a lot today. Oftentimes it's used with Alcoholics Anonymous. But in this prayer, he encourages people to focus on things that unify, on things that we can change versus focusing on the things we can't change. Um, and as we realign then our thoughts on the possible, we experience a sense of peace or a serenity. And this, we believe, comes from God. And so the first part of this prayer goes, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Now this serenity or peace happens as we feel unified then in possibility and in purpose. The psalmist today says, how very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. So we know that unity is a gift from God. It's a desire for us of God. And we have all we need to experience it. Jesus tells us in John's gospel, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. So as we ascend for worship each week or even ascend to hear a daily devotion, as we prepare our hearts to be with God, one of the gifts we receive from a God who's already with us, um, when we dwell in worship, when we dwell in God's word, when we come together in fellowship, however we do it, is peace and unity through Christ. A hymn we often sing goes like this. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. So may God's peace like a river attend your way today. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious God, thank you for the day, for the gift of your love and grace and wisdom that helps us to uh, know the difference between the things we can do and can't do. And so give us your peace and bless us today. In your name we pray. Hey, good to see you today. Have a great one.